Sup, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Side Hustler Society. I'm your host, Elijah. And on this podcast, we talk about various different ways of making money that fit the terms of side hustle or even being a full time hustler, particularly when it comes to labor skills. There's a lot of talk about the gig economy and how to make money with Uber and Lyft and all that stuff. That's fine. But one thing I'm really, really, really trying to push for is getting people more skills that they can actually uh, monetize with. So if you get deactivated from Uber or Lyft or whatever, it's kind of like, well, what what do I do now? But if you actually have a trade or skill, you got options. It's pretty funny that I gave that intro because what we're going to be talking about in this show is a balance between talent and skill. But uh, some people actually do have artistic talent, particularly when it comes to the rap game. But you may have talent, but what do you do with it? So many people have a lot of questions as far as if they have talent for rapping, how can they actually monetize that? How can they actually bring in the Benjamins with that? What's the process of things like, should I sign with a label? Should I do this stuff independent? How do I upload music and make money off of royalties? Should I hire a writer? All these different types of questions. And that's why I'm glad to be bringing on uh, one of my contacts, Kendrick who's actually been in the rap game for quite some time now. Ironically, we uh, met at Amazon. I I don't know what's up with Amazon, but they kind of indirectly produced like some successful people that tend to make some decent money, even if it's not with them. I might make a separate playlist on uh, YouTube just for interviews I did with people that I met at Amazon. Y'all saw the interview I did with John, and um, y'all obviously know about me. I'm just saying. But Kendrick, also known as Teezy, is a Michigan rapper, songwriter, and battle rapper. Teezy is known for his lyricism, punchlines. He is also an up-and-coming artist that started writing music when he was nine years old, inspired by Tupac and Cash Money. He started trying to pursue his career. Teezy was born in Benton Harbor, Michigan. At the age of 11, him and his family moved to Kentucky, where he continued to pursue his career as a rapper. He started rapping with his brother and a few others at the age of 16. Since then, he has performed at various clubs in Tennessee, Kentucky, Texas, etc. He is also influenced by other artists like Jadakiss, Style P, Nas, I. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, and many others. He has opened up for legendary artists Lil Flip and others and has been hosted on a mixtape by Jadakiss named Who Really Got Bars Volume 7 and is still an independent artist striving to break his way into the hip-hop music industry. So with that bio being done, let's go ahead and bring him on the show and hit y'all with the official intro. Welcome to the Side Hustler Society Podcast with your host, Elijah Bilal. This is where you can find out more about hustles that are best for you. And of course, make more money in the process. Elijah has been in the gig economy and freelance space for over five years and has done over 3,000 deliveries on Uber Eats. He's an Airbnb super host, runs multiple YouTube channels, and is the author of the best-selling book, The Anatomy of Financial Success. It's his mission to empower people with the tools needed to be successful. Now, welcome your host, the king of side hustles, Elijah Bilal. All right, Kendrick, we're on. How's your day going? Yo, yo, yo. man, hold on. Before we get started, you did 3,651 Uber East deliveries, bro. Like, Dang, bro, you was like really on it, right? I did like 10, and then I was like, nah, this ain't for me. (laughs) Hey, you know, Dallas is big, bro. Dallas is too big for me, man. It's just it's 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 just too big. Just in the Dallas Fort Worth area, I was like, man, look, two ten rides. I just I'm gonna go get a I'm gonna go start a regular job. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, I'll say this. Having a YouTube channel that covered like the apps kind of made it mandatory to have that many. So like, <laughs> if that wasn't part of the equation, yeah, you know, I might have stopped sooner too. <laughs> yeah, okay, that makes sense then, man. Hey, I salute you though, man. That's a lot of that's a lot of driving, boy. But yeah, man, I'm glad to, I'm glad to be on the show, man. Be a guest on here, man. I 
you know, we've been knowing each other for a nice little piece. So yeah, it's been a long time coming for this interview. Yeah, definitely. And kind of like I said in the uh, intro, like, you know, we had uh, met at Amazon. I don't know if Amazon has like some spell on it, but like uh, a lot of people that started out there, you know, they're doing pretty well nowadays. And uh, that's one thing. I'm not taking shots in any other YouTubers or people in like my industry, the financial industry. But um, a lot of people kind of started on YouTube and they had a, I want to say well, like a blue collar job or like a corporate America job. Then they took the leap, you know, uh, started the YouTube and then they made enough money to quit their job. But they didn't, um, what's the perfect, I'm trying to think of the perfect word. They didn't go through the rites of passage. You're like going in and doing those like heavy lifting, manual labor, warehouse jobs. So they don't actually know what's waiting on the other side if they're not right. successful. People like us went through that. We know what that stuff is. And yeah, it's fun to do when we're in our 20s, but like, you know, we're not going to do that stuff when we're in our 40s and 50s. So we need to, yeah. we're motivated to get this stuff cracking like now yeah for sure for sure um i think uh a lot of the ones who haven't been through it i'm not gonna say that they are um spoiled but it's kind of a sense like that like they haven't had to work a hard job before or just choose not to you know for whatever reason but i feel like working a job like that it um it puts you in a certain mind state to want to do something on your own versus just wanting to keep working for somebody so i i i salute anybody who do the uh especially the warehouse jobs because they are all day back breaking it don't matter where you go you know if your back not hurting your feet hurting something's hurting you know so it's 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 a it's a process and trying to um if you're trying to retire from that it's it's it, i've never seen a good outcome of it basically like I, I've worked at warehouses where uh, people work there for 40 years and they, they when I see them come into work, they moving slow and they hunched over from just being there for 40 years, you know, from when they was my age and, and now they 70, almost 80 years old, still in there. And that don't make sense to me. Yeah. I mean, that kind of stuff I see as a phase. And then um, you, you should always have a game plan to move on from that kind of stuff. Um, you know, that's, partly like what motivated me to start this podcast a lot of people they may not know how to move on like they, they may have something that they're sleeping on that just give it a little attention they can develop a, mm -hmm. a talent inside of them or get a skill or trade and then they just have more options yeah they're scared to take that risk yeah but uh you know that's actually a good segue into uh because apparently uh when we had first met i didn't know you had such a talent for rapping and um yeah apparently you do then yo years <laughs> later you got uh all these songs out all these albums out not the experience in the industry it's like oh dang like you I got had some to, uh, talent i just wasn't aware of so, i had to find i had to find my um how do i put it i like because like i've been doing music but i guess i it was certain stuff that i had to figure out mm -hmm. so like at first i just thought it was you know, go to the studio, record a couple songs and, you know, put it out to some of the homies and uh, and maybe a couple people on the street. And that was it. But, you know, that really it wasn't enough, basically, you know, so I got into battle rap. You know, that was another thing like with um, with, with uh, more exposure. I was getting more exposure there because not only did I did I bring like my battle rap stuff, but I would bring my regular studio stuff to the battle raps. We would pass the CDs out. You know, me and my brother did a lot of music together. So we would pass out our CDs at the battle raps. And, you know, now I got business cards for when I go to shows. You know, people say they don't got CD players. I give them my business card and then got all my social media stuff on there for them to go look me up. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I just try to find different ways to re innovate the way I do my business. And, um, it's been working. I can't complain. It's been working, man. I I go to Houston at least once a year to do a show, and mm -hmm. um, I man anywhere they call me to, I'm going. Basically, like I said, uh, I just went out to New York to meet up with uh, Dave East or whatever, courtesy of one of my homeboys. 
you know, he was going out there also. So he was like, bro, come with me. You know, I just, I guess I'd be in the right place at the right time. Oh, that comes from you willing to get out there to start with or already being out there. You know, one thing I will say is you could bump into like a, a rapper and like there's a societal norm, but um, like, it looks like like you got the Godfather stuff kind of going on. Like um, <laughs> as far as the wardrobe, it's kind of like Fat Joe with the Don Cow G kind of thing, where it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me do that to kind of distinguish me from the rest of these cats. So like, exactly. I'm glad somebody peeped on that because everybody be like, why you be wearing suits and why you do? I'm like, because no rapper just sits around and wears suits all day every day, bro. No rapper does that. And my videos gonna start being like that. It's just. It's not necessarily a gimmick because that's the way I want to be now. Like, I don't want to, unless it's my clothing line, I don't want to be in Gucci and Fendi and why? For what? I don't see no point in it. It's just a waste of money. You know, they spend a thousand dollars on the shirt. I could get like four suits, five suits with that. So, I mean, I'd rather be in the suit and look like a grown man than to be in some designer and look like a thug or whatever they go perceive me to be in that type of attire so yeah i just try to carry myself differently man hey that's powerful i have the same mentality and i made the switch probably about a year ago mentally but as far as the vests and the suits like i just thought about it like society glory it kind of glorifies and i think i just made up a word but like no, 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 uh, yeah it's the, it's kind of the same thing glorify yeah. and validate it's kind of the yeah same yeah thing. But society validates basically being a boy, and there's no really like validation mm -hmm. for stepping into the next phase of life and like dressing like a man. So, like, mm -hmm. if you step into that next phase, like, you get a lot of props and respect points just for stepping in the room and being dressed like a man. And yeah. if I'm not going to be wearing a suit or vest or something, I'm going to be wearing some of my stuff. Like, uh, a lot of my podcast listeners, they know about the veggie outers and uh, the vegan group. So, I'll have a veggie outer shirt on or like I'll have the side hustle society merch on. So if I'm not going to be wearing like dressed like a man, I'm going to be promoting my stuff. Yeah. 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 And that's, and still to me, that's, you know, that's being a man because you stepping outside of the box of what other people are doing. You know, everybody's everybody who, especially in, in, in my line of business, they think that Gucci and Fendi and Mary, this is, how, what you have to wear in order to look like a rapper but the thing is you shouldn't even want to look like a rapper you know yo yo um your artistic ways of how you carry yourself what you saying on your songs that's what makes you a rapper not the way you look you know what i'm saying i just mm -hmm. i try to stay away from that part of the industry because i mean they, they call that an image you know that's really not you it's what you putting on for your video shoot or, or right. for your show or, you know, just to go meet up with the with the famous dude. You know, like you see me in the picture with Dave East. I got on a shirt, a, a Rich City clothing shirt. So, you know, I'm not trying to I, – I basically don't want to overdo things on, on keeping up an image to the point where now every time I go somewhere, you have to see me in this particular type of clothing. Or you have, I have to, I gotta have that new Jordan that came out. I, I I wear loafers, bro. I don't even wear Jordans. I ain't had a pair of Jordans in, I don't know how long. You know, I I just I don't see the point of it. It's just the same thing with, like I said, where I could get five, six pair of suits. I could go get five, six pair of loafers for two, three hundred dollars, bro. And they doing that for one shoe at Jordan. And I'm like, why? You know, it's 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 cool or whatever. If, if that's what you want to spend your money on but in the rap industry most of your money will have to go towards you know your video shoots and promotion and and if you don't get your own studio studio time um and, and don't have no manager you know if you're not doing it independently and you got managers and and other people that you got to pay off and after you do everything then you're really going to be in the hole because you done bought two, three pair of pants for eight thousand dollars, and now, <laughs> you know, now you looking at they looking at you like, hey, I need my cut, and you ain't got that cut because you can <laughs> splurge it on it on jewelry and and designer clothes. You know, you got to think smart. You can't if you're not already at a level where you can spend money like that comfortably and not have to worry about it. 
then you shouldn't even spend it. Uh, my little brother used to always tell me, if you can't buy it twice, don't buy it at all. You know, so I kind of keep mm. that in my head. And notice, I said my my little brother. I only I can't even really call him my little brother because he's uh <laughs> he's bigger than me. He's just younger than me. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you can learn stuff from anybody is basically what I'm getting at. You know, people think right. that um, if you're too young, you can't teach them anything, but you can learn something from any. You can learn something from an eight year old. You know, it, it don't matter. You just got to be willing to listen and take it in. Even if you're not going to utilize it, just listen and take it in, because one day down the line, it might could help you somewhere, you know. And so that's just how I carry myself with the music. If somebody tells me something, even if I already know it, I still listen to them and take it in because they could be saying it from a different perspective than than I'm seeing it in, you know. Oh, nicely put. I mean, um, and um, I will say this about the fashion thing, then we'll move on. But um, I will give a shout out to uh, Kevin Samuels, a pretty uh, popular YouTuber back in the day. He uh, passed a little while back. But uh, he did a lot. Oh, to yeah, elevate. yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he did a lot to, uh, I'll say, elevate the mentality of men when it comes to image, because he is an image consultant. So he kind of popularized, like, hey, dress like a man, you'll get better outcomes in everything. And, um, you know, that was kind of inspiring to me. So I definitely give yeah. a shout out to him. Rest in power. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, crazy thing is what happened to me is uh, – I got around some um I got around some nurses. My auntie is a nurse and a lot of her friends are nurses. And so uh last year on my 30th birthday, we went to Atlanta and they was like all the places that we was gonna go to, you had to dress like nice. You couldn't come in in no shirt like this. And mm -hmm. so my auntie was like, You should start wearing suits, right? So at first I was like, mm, I don't know if that's really my style though. Boy, I'm telling you, I put that first suit on and it's been over every time. <laughs> uh, it can be addicting. You you get some man clothes on, uh, and you see how nice you look, then you step outside, like um, you're getting mad respect from dudes to see you. You get you getting a lot of choosing signals from like young women. It's like you know, some start approaching you like Damn, why didn't I do this stuff sooner? A long time ago, right? I swear you ain't <laughs> lying, bro, because that, that was my exact thoughts, man. Exactly what you said, that's what happened. I'm talking about cats in their 40s and 50s, like, man, that's fresh, this, this, and that. And, you know, women just looking and trying to figure out what you do and what's your job title. And I just keep it pushing, <laughs> though, man. I, I try to stay out the way, man. <laughs> I try to stay out the way. Right, right. All right. So um, a lot of people probably wondering since uh, we've been talking about this for a minute, they might be wondering like what kind of a, and you you touched on it a little in like your bio that I read, but what inspired you to uh, become a rapper? Man, honestly, um, I've been listening to rap since I was a kid, but the first time I seen uh, Cash Money's uh, Back That Thing Up video mm -hmm. was like the inspiration for me because they as a kid they had everything you could have wanted money they had women in there a lot of jewelry on uh just you know they just made it look so so good and i always like i loved english class too so that's you know mm -hmm. that go hand in hand with music with rap and because it, it's it's poetry and then it's just poetry on the beat for rap you know what i'm saying and so right. man just seeing them how big they did it and and then not only them, just you know, like other um other artists like J. Cole and them, just that's how that's this is how I found myself. I started realizing that the things that I was rapping about as a kid wasn't really me. Mm -hmm. And so when I started hearing other artists, like I listened to Tupac already, but it wasn't until I was 16 that I understood what Tupac was talking about. Cause you know, at a young mm -hmm. age, you're not knowing what he's talking about, keep your head up and I see no right. changes and all that. And so mm -hmm. I was like, mm, I, I was 16 and I'm thinking like, if some music from almost, you know, 15, 16 years ago, you know, it still, it still hit like it was this still year. Relevant. Yeah, and then, you know, I said, okay, so that's timeless music. I need to start making that kind of music because 
what he's talking about and changes is still going on right now as we speak. You know, this black on black violence, uh, war against drugs. It's just it's it's still going on to this day. And so mm -hmm. I chose to go from the cash money type of rap to the Tupac and J. Cole type of rap, which I can do all of that. But I rather promote timeless music because it'll never get old versus me talking about women, you know, degrading women, mm -hmm. uh, how much money I got or I, how much money I wish I had or, you know, uh, I got diamonds in my grill and, you know, all that's cool. It's cool mm -hmm. for the entertainment purposes. But when you want to put out a message, what, you know, you got to have something that's going to stick with the people years later. Like a lot of the music we used to like as kids, we don't even listen to no more. You ain't seen nobody crank that soldier boy in years, you know. And that's what I mean about timeless music. If if you just dropping music just just to be dropping it, then you're not gonna last long. It's just it's just gone. You either gonna be a one hit wonder or you might have one good album and then nobody's gonna listen to it again. That's just how that's how the game works. So I try to stay away from that uh that type of music good points yeah because i'm I've always equated rapping to talking and like everyone else is doing what you just said you're rapping about cars clothes women and all that stuff it's like what's gonna make you stand out from the crowd in that regard but when you step into the timeless music thing like you had mentioned uh you have the opportunity to at least stand out and you're thinking with a more investment mentality like i'm planting these seeds and then uh, one may take off, but even if one doesn't take off, like it builds up an audience over time because you're talking about something. Yeah, yeah, and and that's and that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, if you if you go back to even my, like this next album I'm putting out, it's it's literally all me except for three songs. Three the the, the bonus songs is beats from other people and other people mixed them for me. But the the first ten songs is me i made the beat i mixed it you know i did all that by myself and so i want to i want to get into that more because i get tired of spending money you know i get tired of people stealing my beats when i buy them off youtube i just mm -hmm. get tired of having to go through all the processes then sometimes when you want the exclusive beat you can't get up with the producer he's not answering your emails your messages on instagram mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be so I just kind of, I it just kind of made me want to step into my own self and find myself as far as because I've been in, I've been making beats, but it was always on and off. I never stuck with it. And so these last couple times, the la the very last time was uh, Lil Dirk and this other cat stole my beat, mm -hmm. and literally I woke up. Somebody called me like, "Hey, Lil Dirk and them got a video off your beat," and I was like, "What?" I was like, you lying. I had been hit dude up about this beat like months before this video came out. And so I, I look it up and I be down. They got the song and video to it. And then even the producer saying he ain't know nothing about it. And so I'm like, all right, I just need to start making my own beats because anybody can go on YouTube and download a beat. And, you know, they got the YouTube downloaders and all that that you can pull yeah. up on Google and, and pull that stuff off of there. So. It just made me be more independent, basically, going through all that. And it's, you know, it's, I, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, it sounds like you've been that you've been through a lot, and specifically with the the B thing, I, I'm gonna revisit that in a sec. But that's a great tie in into like this next question. But like, mm -hmm. uh, you, we we both know that you're an independent, but um, is there a reason you chose to be independent or? versus trying to get on a label initially or did you try and get on a label because i know they both have pros and cons i'm heavily biased towards the independent anything like my book uh the anatomy of financial success uh -huh. is, is self-published so anytime to, there's opportunity to be independent yeah but yeah yeah, go ahead. You, yeah you're gonna have to you're gonna have to send me one of them too is there you're gonna have to send me like the link so i can order that Oh, I yeah, know it's definitely. the way I order that, right? Yeah. Yeah. How much? Uh depends on what version, fam. Paperback, uh, Kindle, or audiobook. But uh the paperback version is around 18. Okay, yeah. All right. 
Uh, yeah, I'm a, we're gonna talk about that then afterwards. I I get the link from you. I need, but um, honestly, when I was when I was younger, it was all about getting a deal and you know signing with the biggest label in the world and and having them do this this and that. But as years progress with the music industry, you start mm-hmm. finding out different things, and it, and I'm glad you touched on this because. This is something I be want to talk about, but I, I just I'm not a um, I'm not the kind of guy to get on the Internet and just, you know, how dudes just get on there and talk about it. I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. I really don't like social media that much. So the thing is, I'd rather be independent because a lot of these labels do not look at you as talent or they don't care about your talent is what I should say. They only look at you if they feel like you can make them lots of money and you know it's that's that's not where i want to be at when i if i do sign to somebody it would only be a partnership to where they distribute my music and i'm not a full-time artist i had a dude from warner brothers i don't even know if he was real or not but he said he was from warner brothers he sent me a contract and the contract didn't have nothing in there about my royalties about my masters my publishing it was just like you can sign with us you can't do music with nobody else and i was just like out of them first two sentences i told him i respectfully declined because i already ain't finna have nobody telling me who i can and can't do music with you know that's not something Mm -hmm. i'm interested in because if the next high artist want me to do music with him i'm gonna do that it's not it's not no question about that he could be locally hot you know i I, i'm i don't discriminate so for you to tell me that I can't do music with whoever I want, or I can't write this type of song, or I can't put this out, I'm not with that. Uh, you're not finna control what I work to build up all this time, you know, and, and you trying to put like a lock on what I'm doing. It's not gonna happen like that. And so that's why uh, later on down the line in life, I started leaning towards independency. And then once I figured out like how to do it, and like how to go about it that's when it really started coming into play like you know uh i had we me and my brother did a show out in clarksville tennessee one time and this dude named carlito ward he was like a a and r for universal music mm-hmm. uh i mean universal records and uh he came out there and he was telling us you know you need this amount to start a record label he was like twenty thousand twenty five thousand or something and it'll get you uh everything you need contracts you know lawyers all that good stuff but the thing was you know at that time we just kids so we not coming up on no twenty five thousand that easy you know you gotta go you gotta have a trade or somewhere do something you ain't got no business doing and we weren't trying to do that you know so (laughs) (laughs) So it was like you know we'll figure it out you know and and now it's so easy to the point where um i use united masters to dis- distribute my music through because it's free to put your music on there you don't have to pay uh yearly to do that you just put it on there one time and uh excuse me you put it on there one time and um they distribute it to itunes uh spotify uh soundcloud facebook instagram you know just any place you can think of that you can put music on they distribute mm-hmm. it through there and um they don't ask for uh much of a percentage of it either if you don't if you don't uh if you don't pay for the the monthly they got i mean a yearly they got a yearly um premium where you can get a hundred percent of your royalties and they won't take nothing from you you know they just put your music on there they distribute it in and you do all the promotion though so that's the thing i still get to promote all my music the way i want to promote it you know and um I just feel like that's the best way to do it because you're going to see all your money. You know what's coming in and, and what you uh, generate monthly and yearly. So you ain't got to worry about nobody, you know, behind your back taking the money out. And you don't know where this is when, you know, uh, like, for instance, uh, Megan Thee Stallion. She signed to the dude who was a baseball player and he had his own record label. She signed to him and she said that after all her expenses from studio time to videos and all that they was only giving her forty dollars bro forty dollars and you know they that's what they call a 360 deal so it's basically like 
people it's it, to me it's too much information out here for you to be even signing a deal like that you know people like jada kids talk about the 360 deal and tell you how not to sign it even waka flocka was talking about how he had a 360 deal and you know it wasn't right and how they you know they play you out your money so when you start hearing stories like that it's like okay i need to just be independent obviously because me not knowing the ins and outs of it like that they could easily get over on me because they've been doing it for so long and so that's why i stuck to the independency gotcha it's a smart choice based on what you just said you know uh yesterday i was just watching the uh, nwa straight out of compton movie and i just remember that uh scene where ice cube I don't know if this is genetic memory. Ice Cube's son played that part to a T. Man, what? <laughs> to a T, did he? And look just like him. <laughs> right, right, right. But that scene where um Jerry Harold, uh Jerry, the guy who was managing yeah. Easy E's a ruthless label, you know, tried to get Ice Cube to uh, sign a contract without you know running it by a lawyer first. You know, Ice Cube said, All right, that's cool. So I can run this by a lawyer for some first. So he's like, he's saying, Well, no. You know, like here's the seventy five thousand dollars, like sign it. So he's like, no, you know, I don't understand this legal stuff. We're gonna all need lawyers before we sign off on anything. You know, everyone else had already signed off, and like he's just trying to convince him to uh, like, look, if you walk away, you're not gonna be anything. He's like, look, I'd rather be broke than get screwed over. He gave that stuff back, went on his own, and uh, look at Ice Cube today. Right, and he he doing better than a lot of them. I think him and um. Him and Snoop probably got the biggest uh, outcome. And I don't even think Snoop was a part of it. I think he just so happened to come around uh, with the whole death row thing. Cause I don't even, matter of fact, yeah, he wasn't even a part of NWA. So uh, no, it's Cube and Dr. Dre is who I'm thinking of. Dr. Dre, he came out with a, a nice little outcome, but even him, he waited all that time to leave, you know. And he went Cube through hell the, to do yeah. it. Too. Cause like yeah. at the end he had a uh, partner with a uh, Suge Knight, yeah. And it got the roles kind of flipped. Suge Knight used to be his bodyguard, and it flipped, and now he's kind of working for Suge Knight and didn't like it, so he eventually left that and formed yeah. Aftermath. But it's like um, he had to go through all that crap to eventually get to the Aftermath, where he knew a lot about the industry and do it himself. Ice Cube went when he didn't, didn't know anything and yeah. decided to figure it out, and I think that's yeah. why he had the biggest outcome out of them all. He, he just had sure. the balls to actually go out there, figure this stuff out. And then when it hit big, he got to keep all of it versus, yeah. you know, because these worlds, these uh, deals, well, in anything, like in the last podcast I did with Larissa, we were talking about the process of publishing a book. And one thing we talked about big time was the pros and cons of uh, traditionally publishing versus self-publishing. And the pros were heavily biased towards the, a publishing side i mean self-publishing side because like mm-hmm. the other side you get peanuts for royalties yeah and they yeah. might try and bait you with like a big sign-on bonus if you are going to do it then you better make sure that sign-on bonus is like a lot like yeah. oh I, I better get this stuff up front like a lot and most likely then they're not going to give you that so it's like let's just stay independent it's the same thing with rap though that's the exact same thing with rap they try to throw a look a little chicken bone in your face, like, oh, we'll give you a hundred thousand to sign with us. And that's just like I'm watching uh the Wu Tang show. You mm-hmm. seen that? Okay, so basically on there, once they get things rolling, you know, they get a label and he he talking about a hundred thousand and and but they want to mess with their image and and do other stuff to the group, and then the other label talking two hundred thousand and they gonna do this, this, and that. But Rizza, the dude who's playing Rizza, he's like nah i ain't feeling that you know i I want everybody to stay wu-tang but Mm -hmm. they can do a little you know a little solo type of situation with a record label but they still own by wu-tang productions and so and that's my whole thing that's like basically what i said like i'd rather do a distribution deal a partnership than to actually give y'all my everything and then y'all take it and i can't do you know i can't get nothing you see what happened to lil wayne you know, he did all that music with Birdman and then had to go to court about his money. And I ain't even trying to have to do all that. I'd rather it, I, it all come in and I know what's coming in and what's coming out. You know, like Nipsey said, all, all, all money in, you know, no money right. out. So, you know, man, I'm just trying to make sure 
I don't fall in the footsteps of some of these other cats in the game because, man, a lot of people don't make it back from them type of situations, man. A lot of yeah. people do not. So, you know, you got to be careful with who you're dealing with. And like you said, you got to be more like Ice Cube, man. Get a lawyer. You don't understand what that contract saying, man. Get somebody who you feel like and, you know, break it down in, in terms so you know what's going on with what they're trying to give you. And you can't just jump on the first deal that you see because you don't know who's looking for you or who's watching you and who trying to actually be there for you as an artist. So if you just jump on the first deal, you might have ran into somebody like Megan Thee Stallion ran into and now you only getting forty dollars for all your work that you know is worth maybe billions of dollars, you know. So mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta know what you're doing, man. You can't be too quick, you can't be too money hungry. That's what I'm gonna say. Like, nice. even if you ain't got money, act like you got money in that type of sense, you know. Right, right. So uh, when it comes to the rap game, like, you know, some people may actually have the talent to actually rap, but they may need some, that talent may need to be a little refined. Have you ever worked with a voice, uh, a voice coach before? Or you, not? You, not talking really? about, you, you talking about like somebody who could teach me how to sing? Uh, I guess that's part of it, but it's more so like um, your ability to string words together and put gaps in the right places. Sometimes oh. they can use some refinement. So like uh, sometimes the artist may hire a, vo a voice coach to uh, point out like, hey, it'd be better if you did this, this, and this, and then it ends up coming up coming out a little better. Have you ever done anything like that or not really? Nah, me personally, I um uh, I've been recording for so long that um the it way that I was childhood for you, so yeah, a lot of habits like the are already up there. Okay. Yeah, and then that's a lot of people who have to do that are people that just started rapping. So they don't know that you know you're trying to do a run on sentence, but you missing the it's like you missing the spot to take your breath at. And then it don't sound good. I know exactly what you mean because it yeah. it used to be like that for me, but I never had nobody professional come and be like, hey, you need to do this, this, and that. And I don't mind uh, constructive criticism, so I'm not that kind of guy that's going to be like, no, nah, this is the way I rap. This is how it's going to be. <laughs> I'm more of like, uh, okay, well, let me try this. I'm going to try what you're saying, but if that don't work, then I'm going to try it another way that I know or something like that. But most of the time, when I go in the studio, bro, I automatically know where to take my breath set because I've rehearsed my stuff before I even went in there. Like I don't, um, right. I don't write in the studio, especially not um, when I know it's it's paid time. Like if they, if I have to pay sixty dollars an hour and I got two hours booked and I come in the studio and I'm writing, then obviously it I shouldn't even be home. in here. Yeah, right. I shouldn't <laughs> be in here right now because. One, you might you might uh get a, a brain freeze or a brain fart when you're in the studio writing, and then you just wasted two hours of his time and your time, which he don't care because he getting paid for it. But <laughs> you know, he like, all right, just come back tomorrow. We can do this again. You know, he hoping you can't come up with nothing tomorrow because it's just free money for him. But for you, <laughs> for you, if you're not already somebody who's big and and you, you know, you're not pulling in no money from it, then you're wasting a lot of money and a lot of time, man. And, and I just keep that in mind when I'm doing something, you know, like, I'm telling you, bro, I, I've seen this before, man. I, I go to my studio sessions and when I was paying for studio time, cause I got my own, I got my own little, little setup now. And so um, when I would go in there, I would see cats in there, they still writing and they got half the song done and he like, yeah, I'm gonna come back next week and record the rest. And then when I get in there, I come with like six to eight songs. Right. Mm -hmm. And I finish at least six of them in the two hours that I'm recording. And the, the, the engineer is looking at me like, bro, uh, you like the dopest dude I ever seen come in here. You, you don't even have a pen and pad and you rapping all this and, <laughs> and some of them have no courses. It's like three minutes long, bro. He's like, how you doing this? And this, this, and that. I rehearsed before I come in here, bro. Like, I didn't come in here to play with you. I didn't come in here to waste time. I know what I need to come in here and do. And, and that's what I do. Like, this, I'm really serious about it. And people who do that, they are just doing it for like what I said I used to do it for, just to let the homies hear it. 
and you know a couple people around the neighborhood but when you serious and you want the whole world to take you serious that's how you got to carry yourself if if mm -hmm. i come in there and and my song is halfway done the engineer gonna look at me like oh he's just another guy i'm gonna get money off of but if, if i come in there and do it where i'm getting eight songs done in two hours the next time a famous rapper coming there to record with him he's gonna be like hey it's this one cat that I want you to work with, bro. I'm telling he came in here and did eight songs in two hours. You need to work with him. You need to check him out at least. You know, so I keep that in mind, man. Just just handling business the way it's supposed to be handled. It's study, you know, half ass and everything. Nice, nice. Now that that's just a good example of how, like, uh, you know, it's actually another form of an image, and you're holding up a good business image. And it's practical because you're not wasting money but you know you're not the only one in the room so like when people see that you're serious about this stuff a lot of times they'll get on your side whether they realize it or not like the engineer may not even attend it even thought about actually saying that to the next biggest rapper that comes through there but you pop in their mind because their process is similar to what you're doing it's like yeah. oh wait 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 wait. let me let me happen to mention this mm -hmm. i think a lot of what you said maybe the internet has something to do with this but you know i think the perfect example is like the movie notorious right where it was mm -hmm. right when um biggie had recorded is before he recorded the juicy song but puppies kind of you know convinced him like look that street side that that street rap stuff that's side b but you got to give me something to play on the radio he's like look if i spit this stuff you know cats gonna be laughing at me they'll be laughing at you all the way to the bank he's like man i'm gonna need some time so he brought some ladies over you know got some inspiration then he finally got in the studio and knocked it out but he did yeah. everything in the studio as far as like writing and all that stuff so people might have that general image of like hey that's how the process goes but they're on a label that has that studio sitting there and it's already paid for you got to yeah. pay for all this stuff so that's stupid for you to do yeah right you know what i'm saying that and that's what i'm saying like you shouldn't go in there unprepared and then that, you shouldn't come in there and, and like I don't like for me to do songs like that. I do. I look. All the inspiration is up here. Like I didn't been in enough relationships and dealt with enough women to make songs for the ladies. That's that's my favorite lane right there. Like I honestly, I honestly, if it ain't speaking about real life stuff, I I love doing songs for the ladies because I'm a gentleman. I know how to talk to them, and I, I'm a good listener when it comes to women want to talk to me and. I just, I just, I know, I ain't gonna say I know women fully because you will never know women fully, but that's a, that's another topic for another time. But, uh, you know, uh, I just, I just, you know, I know how to do them type of songs. And that come from listening to Tupac because he was like, uh, he was like, the women is who you should do your songs for anyway. You always got to have something for them because the men is going to do what the women like. If the woman like it, the man gonna like it too. Cause guess what? When he riding with his woman and you got this this song on here for the ladies, he gonna be one to play that song while she in the car, you know. And if she like it, he like it, you know. He think that's gonna get him somewhere, and it might, it might not. It just all depends on what type of guy you is, you know. So, yeah, I keep something for the ladies, man. I don't, I don't play no games when it comes to the ladies, man. You know, um. I don't think I've ever, well, if you pay attention, I guess people will figure this out. But uh, like the Veggie Outers vegan group, like a lot of people wonder, because I don't, you, I just started using the meetup stuff. Uh, I, I've been like kind of not wanting to get on there because it has its own share of problems, but eventually we did get on there. But it, the group was pretty big even without it. And a lot of people wonder, like, how did it get so big? And I basically just followed the party rule. Like, if you want to throw a, a baller party, what do you do? You get a bunch of fine women. That takes care of the rest of it. They'll bring the dudes <laughs> and bring the other women too. That's how the veggie outers got started. I mean, um, I, 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 I got a lot of attractive women and dudes saw uh, yo know, women in the photos they and they start showing yeah. up and bro, they flock to it, bro. I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> men like women. If you put a bunch of women, like you said, in the group and they find they're gonna be like, oh, I gotta go see what this about. I gotta go, I gotta go read up on this, look more into this. And it and it, and I don't even think it's intentionally, it's just like <laughs> being a man, that's what we do, you know. That's that's what right. men do. They're like and the thing I'm about women is women, women like being around other women too. So if they see like attractive women in there and they're attractive, it's like, 
oh, oh it's kind of like a hierarchy here. So, you know, let me slide yeah. in there. It must be pretty baller. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, that, that's the social dynamics of that. But I'm not going to get too <laughs> off topic, I'll say. Yeah, nah, I, I, I just revealed you know. the secret of the veggie adders. Like, cats going to be like, I thought this was about, like, eating healthy and stuff. It is, but, like, if people ain't coming, Yo, people ain't gonna want to join the group. You gotta know some right. social dynamics to get the group popping. They call it supply and demand. You gotta have something that's demanding the people, man. Yeah, that's facts, man. That's right, facts, right. Man. That's <laughs> um, fact. So I would say the next question would be because um you're obviously the writer in your business too. Uh, do you recommend that like it, someone who's getting in the rap game should they learn how to write lyrics or should they hire a writer? I mean, to me, the best thing to do is is learn how to write on your own because that way you don't have to pay nobody. But if you one of them cats that it's just not your thing, and oh, excuse me, I didn't drink too much water. If it's not your thing, and um, you know, you you don't have the mindset for it, then by all means, go get you a writer. But just make sure it's somebody who's writing about stuff that that's you and not you know, Drake, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. I had a cat, he wanted me to write for him. And he was like, yeah, I want to sound like Lil Dirk. And at that time I wasn't even listening to Lil Dirk. I was like, bro, I don't, I was like, I don't know how to rap like that, bro. That, that's drill rap. You know, he talking about a lot of killing and uh, mm. we putting the op in the cigar and all that. And I'm just like, I don't, that's not me, bro. I'm not 16, 17 years old, bro. I'm a grown man. Like, I'm not rapping about stuff like that, bro. I'm trying to empower the minds of people who out here doing that dumb stuff. I'm trying to stray them away from that. I'm not trying to bring them towards that. Even so, if I'm writing for somebody, it got to be somebody who wants who wants it to be about their real life and the stuff that they doing in real life. Like I can't write for nobody who want to be um, a gangster rapper. You know, people want to be gangster rappers and. And that's that's the road that's not gonna get you nowhere because I could write all these gangster raps for you all day, but if you're not that kind of person in real life, it's gonna show sooner or later, you know. And and I try to stray people away from that because you see what happened to most of the gangster rappers, you know. What it never ends well, you know. So I'd rather you speak about what you really. That's why I do songs like like I was talking about earlier, the timeless songs and the songs mm-hmm. for the ladies and. I might even, you know, get in my feelings and do a breakup song and because that's me. That's this is stuff that I go through on a regular basis in life. Is I'm not always happy, I'm not always sad, I'm not always uh against women. I'm not, you know, it's just mm-hmm. this is the different, you know, stages of me. I like to party, you know, I love women, I, I like getting money too. Um other things I'm not going I'm not going to glorify them, but if it comes down to it, I like to do that too, you know. So <laughs> I just try to, you know, keep it more realistic than anything than to try to portray this type of image that I'm this type of person when I know that's not me, you know. Mm-hmm. So right. that's why I don't, yeah, I don't recommend it unless, you know, unless, like I said, you not, you just don't have that ability. But it's easy though. So I don't understand, but I guess I just, I just got a God given talent for it. But I just feel like it's easy. It's, I don't see why people can't write. I feel like the, the reason why people can't write is because of the fact of what I just said. They're too busy trying to put off a type of image of themselves that's mm-hmm. not them. And then they read the raps that they write and they like, nah, this ain't it. They're thinking too hard about it. Boy, you can get on. Nowadays, you can get on there and say whatever. Half these cats, you can't even understand. So, I mean, <laughs> when you don't. Man, auto you know, getting abused man what boy hey look i i tried auto tune one time and i found out you got to really know how to sing still even with that you got to know how to carry a note i was like uh no nah, this ain't for me at all i'm an original hip-hop rapper like this is just not my this not my side of the field right here so i, I stepped away from that real quick <laughs> okay okay so um I guess we'll transition into kind of like the uh, well, we've been talking about the money side, but I guess we'll get like a tad bit more specific. But um, in terms of uh, since you're independent, a large portion of the promotion is going to be on like your shoulders. 
specifically just talking about online. We'll talk about offline in a sec, but uh, what ways do you promote your um, music online? So basically, um, usually what I do is if like if I got a new song out every day around um, 12 a.m., I kind of post it on my story just to let people know it's out because, you know, some people aren't always on social media. And so I posted on all of my social medias around the same time every day because I found out that at certain uh, times of the day, people are on. And so mm-hmm. once I found that out, I started utilizing it. This DJ that I had got beats from one time, he used to send me like little tips about uh, how everything works as far as that goes. And he was like, uh, 12 to 1 o'clock is like Facebook, Instagram, or mm-hmm. it's Facebook. And then 12 is Instagram, where people just be on there the most. And so I was like, hmm, I'm going to try that out. And I tried it one day, and it actually boosted my um views and likes at a, and i was like okay maybe he is right so i i do that um you know i sometimes i do um freestyle videos of me rapping over the beat of the song i, I might want to put out next or see mm-hmm. how people react to it if i if that shows me if i need to put it out if i need to do a video for it that's another way i do the videos you know promote the video to the fullest and make sure I put the, the the CD that is coming out on at the end, my social medias and all that. I just keep everything in their face, basically. So, you know, mm-hmm. when they when they finally drops or when they looking for something new, it's already in their face. And they don't have to come ask me like, hey, where is the when you going to drop something new or when I, I heard the new song you put out, you got anything else, you know, so. I try mm-hmm. to keep everything in their face. I have them subscribe to my YouTube. Um, you know, I wish you could subscribe to my my uh, Apple Music and my iTunes, but that's not <laughs> something that they offer on there. So I tend to send people my links. If they ask me that, I just send them my link here. You got all my music, my albums, my singles, everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I just try to keep it in their face at all times online. And um, as far as... Uh, as far as that goes, it, it works for me perfectly, you know. So I get people, all the new people. I just got a couple of uh couple of new followers as I posted the picture with me and Dave East. So I know people are watching, they just waiting on me, they be waiting on me. And sometimes <laughs> I get out of tune because like I'm going to school now for the be in the medical field, and so I've been kind of out of tune with it because I've been trying to focus on that because that's my plan B, you know, that's my side hustle. If the rap don't work, I'm gonna go into that fully and not even worry about music no more until I feel like I want to come back to it. And that's just what I've been doing, just staying out the way and uh, yeah, just trying to keep something in motion, man. Keep a keep a plan B and a plan C, because at the end of the day, music is not a career. It's just uh, it's a stepping stone for you know trying to get ahead in life with whatever you're trying to do, because a lot of cats. They seem like they making a lot of money in there, but a lot of that money is, like I said, towards uh, they promoters, they studio time and and videos because they not fully independent. They have to depend on the label. And, you know, even when the label pays for the studio time at the end of the year, the money that they give you, you have to pay back in taxes. See, a lot of people don't know that either. So they go and they take their money and splurge on jewelry with the hundred thousand that the label gave them. But at the end of the year, you're gonna have to pay that hundred thousand back in taxes. So if you don't have that, then you end up in a worse position than before you started with the label. So it's, you just gotta play it smart. You gotta know what you gotta know what you're getting yourself into. Right, right. Brought up a good point about the taxes, and um, yeah, because uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know if you know this. I'm I'm, I'm kind of curious, like. Are rappers hit with self-employment tax? Uh, you might not know that, but they are. So what they do is, this is what they do. The ones who are paying their taxes, this is what they do. The clothes, the jewelry, the cars, the houses, all that stuff they buy, they claim it on their taxes. So they're writing it off, okay. Yeah, they write it all off on their taxes, and that's how they get, you know, if they, I don't know if they get money back like uh, us middle-class people do, or if probably, they just probably pay it off. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's kind of a 30 cents on the dollar kind of thing. Like, yeah. 
And I like everyone uh, consult with a tax advisor. This for entertainment purposes only. Or, or y'all could actually check out the interview I did with Kamari Ellis where we talked about taxes. But you know, it's two scenarios. I mean, there's the uh, most cases a 30 cents on the dollar kind of scenario. So like you spend ten dollars on some, but it's going to help you with the business. Then you can um, claim th- you get a three dollar deduction off of that. Yeah, and then yeah. there's uh, other ones where it's a hundred percent deduction if that expense is necessary for your business. Like, hey, if you mm-hmm. don't have this, you can't conduct business. Then you can claim that a hundred percent. But you know, those are more the exception to the rule. Most of the time, it's for every dollar you're spending, you're going to get thirty cents back. See, see, and that second one though, that's probably the one that they using because you know they act like they need clothes to perform cars to make it to the shows and the jury is probably like the, the least thing that they gonna get a hundred percent on that's probably the, the 10 cent the, the 10 cent one you're talking about or the 30 cent or whatever you said and mm-hmm. um that's probably how they doing that though i know for sure they claim all that stuff on their taxes and that's how they stay away from getting like you know being like wesley snipes where you get far in behind on your taxes and or and, Lord, know, they come and look yeah they coming to look for you and and take you take everything you own and stuff like that people don't you know people don't be well i can't say people don't be responsible because you know a lot of these cats pay people to do their taxes for them because they don't and know how they to don't, do it on their own yeah and they don't understand how taxes work that's why a lot of these cats end up getting robbed I'm just yeah, exactly you. exactly you don't have to be a tax advi- you don't have to be a fish, official tax advisor but at least know a little something about it that's all yeah that. yeah yeah so um I, I guess we could transition into uh what, like what ways do you promote like offline we covered online but like what about your offline methods um so offline what i do is like i was talking about earlier uh when i go to my shows when i do my shows i always bring business cards with me and I'm, you know, hands on with it. Like after I get off the stage, before I get on the stage, I pass out my my cards and tell them, hey, I'm on Apple Music, Spotify, you know, title, whatever you listen to your music on. I'm on there. I hand them it. I show them that this the name like it has my name right in the middle of the card. So I say, mm-hmm. just type this in and you're going to pull me up on whatever social media, whatever you got. And um that's like my that's been my biggest thing because i used to do cds but you know we in the day and age now where everybody's car has bluetooth or aux cord so nobody's yeah. listening to cds no more and and before i even realized that transition and was going on I, I would try to hand somebody a cd and they'd be like i ain't got no cd player and i'm thinking like everybody got a cd player in the car i'm like i don't believe that i just i'm not hearing that like i just I wasn't believing it at first. And so <laughs> after a while, I started riding in people's cars that had like newer cars. And I was like, dang, maybe they wasn't lying. Maybe they didn't. They you took got too many Ubers, Ubers and saw that it wasn't part of the equation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I had this cat out here that I used to kick it with out here in Kentucky. And uh, he was like, man, you need to get you some business cars with all your. Uh, with all your social media on it and stuff and, and, and the stuff that you got your music on. And I was like, you know what? That's I never thought about doing it like that. And so what I did was I tested it out. I went to um I went to the Loud Fest. I don't know if you know about it. They do it every year in Houston though. It's like a yeah, festival. I, I know too. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's dope, man. You should go, you should go to that one to one time and and kind of uh you can find people out there to interview. They let people come out there and do interviews and stuff. And so um, I went out there and when I was doing my interviews, uh, people was like, uh, you got an email. I give them my email or whatever. But they was like, uh, where can we find you at? Boy, I pull out a handful of the cars and I'm just passing them out. Right. And mm-hmm. all people kept saying was you were the only artist that came with a business card with all your stuff on there. And that's when I realized, OK, that's another way of being different and being outside of the box, because nobody's mm-hmm. thinking of doing that nobody's thinking of that they just bring like t-shirts uh i don't even know how they bring in their music some of them don't even bring music like and no, that's the guys. thing like yeah they they not they not bringing cds no more because they know nobody has cd players but i don't have i don't be really feeling like 
going through each person's phone and being like, hey, this is this me right here, this me right here, this me right here. So instead, I'm going to hand you this card. And if you're really interested, even if you forget about it while we there, when you get home and you empty out your pockets and you see that card, you're going to be like, oh, this old dude from the show, I could let me see what he's talking about. Let me check him out real quick. Or even if you don't do it that day, you're going to do it because that card is always going to be in your possession and you're going to know. Now, if you lose it, that's the one thing. But I can't fault you for that if you lose it. But if you lose it, I remember people real vividly. Like, I don't forget names and stuff like that. So I might even, you know, uh, tag you in my new video or something just to see if you checked me out yet. And that might string something, you know, but that's more online anyway. But it's, yeah, like I keep them business cards on deck. Like, I don't know who I'm going to meet up with, who it is, and or what type of level they are. You're going to get one of my business cards for sure. Do you have a scan code on your business cards? No, nah, it's just one of them regular business cards. I haven't stepped. I know which ones you're talking about. I haven't stepped into those yet. Uh, I plan on doing that sometime this year. Uh, they call uh, – what they call man i was just showing my auntie the cars and can't even remember what they call but they got um, it to where you scan it go ahead no i don't think you know there's a particular call. name for it it's basically uh -huh. um like you can uh arrange for the scan code to be fitted with whatever website you want uh then uh -huh. you download it and then you just take that image and give it to whoever's going to design the card or uh -huh. or you can do it yourself on vistaprint and then that code is on the card and then you know they a uh, person takes their phone and the scans it and then boom, it takes them to wherever you want them to go. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, I started doing that uh two years ago. And because uh, someone told me about it back when I was in my Uber days, not with Uber East, but like rideshare. So this guy in the back of my car, I was kind of selling on my and he asked about it. So I'm not forced him to sell, but he has asked, like, what else do you do? So I was selling him on like what I was doing. I gave him a business card. He said, Oh, this is a nice card. Um uh, one thing you might want to think about doing is like adding a, a QR, QR code to it. I was like, mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I I do that. So I'm, yeah. I, I did it. <laughs> but yeah, I guess a lot of good results because a lot of people, they'll scan that card actually right away when they get in their car or something. So even if they lose the card, you know, it's they on the phone at that point. So yeah. 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 That's something I'm going to look into then since you said it ain't got to be. Uh... It ain't no particular brand for it. I know my cousin, he had some where uh, it had his music on there. And it was like, I guess it was like what you're talking about, the QR code. You scan it in. It took them straight to wherever his music was at. And he had his whole mixtape on there. He was selling the card, though, for $10. Like, he would sell the whole card for $10. And I was like, that's a hustle. I was like, that's what made me really think about it. He was just, he'd be like, huh, this card is it's yours. You keep it. You scan that, you know, and, and you're going to get all my music. And I was like, we was in New York at that time. And he had just stopped somebody and be like, hey, bro, check out that new mixtape. And they'd be like, I ain't got no CD player, just like I was talking about, right? Yeah. And so he'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, it's on this card right here. You just, get, you know, I'm only charging 10 for it. You just scan this and. Boom, you got it, you know, and they was they was all for it. Like he had a nice little sales pitch with it. So I was like, Yeah, that's that's another thing, having a sales pitch when you're trying to when you trying to sell it. I really don't be trying to sell it though. I'd rather give it out for free because right. I know then, uh, then you can link like, to like uh you could have like a link tree and like go to websites, go to YouTube, go to Spotify, like where whatever way they choose to consume the music or buy it, all of it is right there for them to pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I try to do everything free on the on the um the off the line promotion because I know if a person ain't heard me rap before, then they not gonna be too quick to buy my music. You know, I learned that over the years. They want to hear something first before they be like, Oh yeah, man. But it's some genuine people out there that'll be like, Hey, I got five for you, man. You know, I know you did a lot trying to get this done, so they might hand you five, ten dollars, fifteen. Anything's a profit to me because, and I ain't, you know, I ain't picky. You know, if you gonna <laughs> give me some, yeah. If you gonna give me some, I ain't gonna be like, oh man, I'm worth more than that. This, this, and that. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not turning no money down. You could give me a dollar for the CD, and I'm gonna take it because everything adds up. You know, it's, it's, it, you gotta look at it like that because, like I said, I'm giving it away for free. So I mean, I'm already feeling like. 
you know, not uh, not necessarily underselling myself, but I just want you to, I really want you to hear this. You need to hear this. Like, mm-hmm. it's not something that you used to. Like, I've been trying to stray away from cussing a lot on certain songs. I'm going to say that on certain songs. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <give that laughs> because I want everybody to be able to listen. To right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had to throw that in there because I, I, I'm a little, I'm a little vulgar, man. I got a, I got a, I got a sailor's mouth, man. <laughs> I'm doing good on this podcast, though. I know, I know when to turn it off. So, but in that studio, in the studio, it's hard to kind of turn it off because I've been rapping like that for so long, and uh, yeah, right. I just, I'm just kind of used to it. It just happens without me trying to do it, you know. So, yeah, huh. uh, yeah, that's 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 mainly what I do. Though I, I got them cards, man. And I pass them things out, man. And, they go check me out. I, I I respect it. And now that you tell me about the QR code, I'm gonna start doing it like that too. Right, right. Yeah, it it definitely helps. I I can speak from personal experience. I do that with any kind of card now, not just business, but like for the veggie outers or anything. All of them got scan codes to go to uh, some kind of call to action. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of already touched like the surface of this, but like. How many different ways can you make money as a rapper? Like a lot of people think like, oh, so you buy his music on iTunes and you know, he gets paid royalties. But they don't consider like you booking shows. They don't consider like th- this business card thing that you said your associate was doing. That's completely new to me. That's pretty creative. So what ways yeah. can you actually make money as a, as a rapper, like the different ways? So it's it's like you said with, with them streaming your music on iTunes and you got show money. You know, some people charge for interviews, you know, um, uh, when you're going out of town, you could, you know, tell a person you want, you know, look, you're going to have to do this, this and that for me in order for me to get there. Um, um, Merch, merchandise is another one, you know, having your own, you know, uh, brand that you branded and your clothing line and stuff. Um, What other ways, man? Just... To me, them like the main important ones, the merchandise, the streams and the show money. That's where that's where all your money coming from. But see, the only way you're going to get paid for shows is, is if you bring in people in there. You have to be able to attract people to come in there because a promoter is not going to book you for money if you only bring in one or two people into his venue. So if you could bring 50 to 100 people in his venue, then you could talk to him about like, let's say if he don't want to just pay you straight cash, right? He don't want to necessarily pay you straight cash. You could mm-hmm. be like, okay, well, how about uh, how about you take the bar and I take the door money? You know, it's still he's still getting some out of it, and it's like, you know, you bring in, let's say he charging ten dollars, you charge ten dollars to get in, and you taking the door money and. 200 people come you know that's two thousand dollars easy for you easy you know so you it, that's to me that's the best way show money merchandise and um the streams the streams is kind of weird because if you don't have a um if you don't have a big fan base then you're not gonna make that much off streams you're only gonna be making like a couple dollars a month if you don't have a big fan base so you gotta build your fan base up more so for them streams versus um the show money if you bring in people with you you know some of these cats they got a hundred cats they hang with but only 10 of them will show up to the show so if mm-hmm. you can't bring all 100 of them in there the promoter is not gone he's not gonna look at it like that because he can get 10 people in his venue without you know booking anybody you know he does right. that throughout the week people come and might sit down just to eat at his venue so you got to be able to attract people to that venue and show them that you can put on the show because even though you attracting them people there if these people don't like your music then it's just like he wasted his time with you so yeah the show money the show money for show and the merchandise money you get people to like your brand and like your merchandise to where they buying it like that like uh nipsey was charging a hundred dollars for a shirt you know, you don't have to sell that many shirts to make a thousand dollars. You just ten shirts. You know, it's easy. To, uh, you sell thirty shirts uh, for three hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? You nine thousand dollars easy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 just simple mathematics, really. You just got to know how to 
you got to know how to um, sell yourself, basically. And if you're not selling right. yourself right, then nobody's nobody's going to want the product. Right. So, like, um, you brought up streaming. Like, how do royalties work when it comes to streaming? Like, what's an example, like, a percentage that a streaming platform takes and then how much would you take home on, like, a, I guess, a certain amount of listeners? Um, it depends. It depends on who you go through, because I know a lot of them, they have different ratings. But like with United Masters, like I said, I do the um, I do the premium. Mm -hmm. And so um, you get the flat fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they not they, they only taking sixty dollars a year from me and the rest that I accumulate over the year is mine. So and for instance, if I make a thousand dollars this month, that thousand dollars is mine. It's like I don't have to pay them nothing out of it or or worry about them taking that uh sixty dollars every month out of what I'm making. So I can accumulate so much money and then only have to pay them sixty dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh to me, they are the best platform to use because like mm -hmm. I said, all the other ones. They keep charging you yearly to keep your songs on there, even though it's only like ten dollars. Who wants to keep paying ten dollars a year to keep their song somewhere? And then if right. you don't pay that ten dollars, they take your song off and it's no longer able to be listened to on whatever platform you have it on. So with United Masters, you just one time you put it on there free. You don't have to pay to put it on there. The only thing you pay for is if you want 100 percent royalties. And you don't even have to do that. If you don't do that, I think they take like um, they take like 40 cent or something. It's like 40 cent or something like that out of your streams, out of each one of your streams that you get, depending on how much you get. So they're not really taking that much, but I don't want them taking nothing. Like I ain't, <laughs> I ain't, <laughs> I'm greedy at this point with my money. Like I ain't, I'm stingy. I don't want to have to give y'all more than I have to, you know, so. I, right, did the, uh, right. I did the premium, the sixty dollars a month thing, and I ain't I ain't got no complaints with them, man. And after I think it's like after fifty dollars, you can you can cash out, but man, I just let it keep going up. Like I ain't I ain't taking nothing now till I get to where I'm trying to get to. Like I'm right. not going, yeah, I'm not gonna get too antsy. I I had you know a couple partners. I I try to t I try to preach to them the same thing. Like just leave it in there, don't touch it. I don't care how hungry you get. <laughs> you know, just find yeah, find you another hustle that can you know keep you going and leave that money where it's at because at the end of the day, that's that's your money and then it takes a it takes a lot, you know, when you building it from the bottom up, it takes a lot to get paid off them streams the way you want to get paid off of them. Like like I said, I've done numerous shows. I've dealt with um, I did the mixtape with Jada Kiss um you know so just going out and meeting different people and building your followers and your fan base up that's that's the way to do it with the streams but if you don't have like i said if you don't have that fan base then you're not gonna you're not gonna see that much it's only gonna be like a couple dollars a month i'm a i'm a witness to this because that's how it started out for me before i got to where i'm at now like and it, and i don't even i pr i promote and i promote and i promote also it's about that too. You can't just put your music out and then expect everybody to go listen to it. You got to put it out there in their face because you only got so many listeners who actually going to just go check you out all the time without you saying something. You know, you got to you got to put it out there in their face. And even um even the haters, you throw it in their face too because they are your biggest um fans. They your biggest fans or your biggest supporters, I should say. Yes, they are hating on you, but guess what? This hater just told 10 haters, and them 10 haters just told another 20 haters, and them 20 haters just told another 100 haters. And so now you got all these haters that's listening to your music just to talk about how much they don't like you. You know, it's all good promotion at the end of the day, bro, and that's how you got to look at it. Like, I don't get yeah. mad when people say they don't like my music. I'd be like, that's fine. I mean, you're not the only one, I'm sure, but I rarely get that, but when I do get it, I'd be like, cool. You know, I might get a thumbs down on, on one of my videos that's about about doing something righteous. And I'd be like, oh, look, I got a hater. That's cool. I like that. You know, that's, I love it. I got a hater. <laughs> no, that's one of the 48 laws of power. Like, all media is good media, both yeah. good and bad. Like, because that means that people are talking about you. And if no one's talking about you, 
Yeah, I think uh, in that book they talked about P.T. Barnum, the the person who was responsible for uh, making what's known as the modern day circus. And mm-hmm. like he would have people would be critiquing him and people that would love him. And if like the well got too dry, no one was talking anything about him. He would publish something from another company critiquing his own stuff just to get the conversation started. People to talk. Yeah. I'm going to tell you an artist, a rap artist that's good at doing what we talking about right now. Mm-hmm. Drake. Drake is, he's like, he's like top notch with it because you see the hotline bling, for instance, mm-hmm. he did that little dance on there. And got like 50,000 million memes of it, right? But if you go on YouTube right now and look at how many views that video got, he got a billion views on that video. Just because yes. people want to go see him do that, that dance that they think is stupid. You know, they think it's just, I don't get why he dancing like that. But you watched <laughs> it a billion times and you still haven't figured out why he's doing that. He's doing that because he know that it's going to bring attention to him. And all right. the other stuff that he do. It's another reason why Gotti signed a black youngster to his label because he act crazy. He do a <laughs> bunch of stuff and people be like, why is he doing this? But guess what? It's going to always be eyes on CMG because of him, because he does the most what they like to call remedial stuff. Like it's just you just don't expect him to do the stuff that he do because he rich and he just I don't know how to explain it, bro. He goofy, but. At the same time, he like a serious goofy though, and it and people love it. They don't love it, but they love it at the same time because they always click on it. So that it's it's all mm-hmm. a tactic, for real. It's a gimmick. That's what they call it. A gimmick. I like that. I, I can see that. And uh, with Drake, I mean, um, I think he's done that a few times. Do some oh, controversial yeah. just to get people on the video, and ho- hopefully he keeps doing that. And. Uh, he stays out of the line life for other controversial stuff like not knowing how to use a toilet. Like the whole oh, thing with that man. Instagram model and like hold on, and hold on, because I see I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. But you, you know you, what? You, you didn't hear about that. The Instagram model I, called the no, I, see he be doing stuff though, and that's what I'm saying. That's one of his tactics, bro. He probably do know how to use the toilet, but if I say <laughs> I don't know how to use the toilet, you know how viral that's gonna go. You see what I'm saying? And that's what right, I say. Right, about right, pregnancy. right. So instead, he's going to put this hot sauce in the condom, the condom to stop the pregnancy instead of using the toilet like 99% of other dudes after they finish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let, that's let, crazy. Nah, no, 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 Google, no, Google it. After we finish with this, Google it. That, that, that happened. Nah, it's man, it's, it's me... in into real life. So... Um, <laughs> I almost forgot the next question I was about to ask. So let me go ahead and um, don't get too far off topic. But like, if um, so, what what's the best way that someone can uh, support like a, a independent artist like yourself? Like, what what's the best way that a fan can support you? Like, because some the people free. might not actually know the best way they can support you. Like, the what free way, do? the free way. The oh. way that the way that you don't have to pay. So when I say the freeway, I mean subscribing to their YouTube, you know, uh add them on, I mean um listen to them on on iTunes and Spotify on the things that you don't have to pay for their music on. Yes, you have to pay monthly for that subscription or whatever, but mm-hmm. that music on there is technically free, you know, because we not physically seeing no profit off that unless you just constantly streaming and streaming and streaming it. But the subscribing to people's YouTube or, you know, if somebody got their own website, you know, and you want to go hear their music and that's what, that's the only place you can get it. Go to their website or, you know, um, go to their shows. You know, some people, when they do shows, man, they'd be like, uh, the first 20 people show up, I'm getting you in free. And people don't, you know, people still don't jump on stuff like that. And I feel like that's why a lot of independent artists are not as far as they could be, because mm-hmm. people don't go and 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 support freely, like the free stuff. Like I said, it don't mm-hmm. cost nothing to click subscribe on YouTube, bro. Like, right. It's just like people don't. I don't. I'm not gonna say people don't care. But people just be like, oh, I don't got to subscribe. I can just go back to his page whenever. 
you know, but then you're going to be asking me when something new drop versus <laughs> if you subscribe, it's going to come down on your phone and it's going to send you a notification, you know, and then you don't have to ask the person, whoever the artist is, when, when your new video coming out or what's new on your YouTube channel, you know, uh, right. you subscribe, man, you get, that's a one-time thing and you don't have to keep doing it or you can go follow them on social media. You know, that's free. All you got to do is click follow. You ain't got to pay to go on nobody page. You don't have to pay to talk to nobody. And it's best to talk to these cats now versus when they get to a higher level, because then you're going to think they be in Hollywood when they too busy to deal with you. But at the time mm -hmm. when they was down low, you wasn't even you wasn't even trying to put them on your radar. You know, you knew about them, but you didn't really support them like that until it was, you know, it was all the way up there. And now they looking at you crazy because they like, bro, I tried to do this, this and that with you. I tried to get you to subscribe then and you never even subscribe. So it's like now you got to pay to come to my show versus if you was one of my uh, first first off the jump subscribers, I might have brought you, flew you out here to the show. You could have had front row seats or even been on the stage with me. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the best thing to do, man. Just support when it's free. Okay. Yeah, support when it's free, man. They they like to wait till the last minute. You know, a lot of people they they like to go off of what everybody else is doing. So if everybody else is listening to you and they feel like, okay, I, I'm gonna go listen to them now. But if ain't nobody listening to you, then they like, oh, I ain't I ain't gonna be the one. I don't want to be the one. To, the sheep is Saudi. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I I can see that. I can see that. So um, I will say we're gonna start winding down the show. We are on the last like few questions, but I know I'm not, I'm not the only person wondering about this one. But like, what's the biggest challenge that you faced, like just getting your rap career like off the ground? Would you say? Uh, ooh. basically like um. I would say finding myself as far as like what I what I make songs about mm -hmm. and being not being shy all the time because I used to be the type of guy that yeah like you said you didn't even know I did music when we was at Amazon but that was because I wasn't I wasn't really out there like that like I did it, it wasn't my thing then and I was just still I was still trying to figure out what I need to be rapping about that's gonna keep people in tune with me you know what i'm saying and so mm -hmm. i i feel like uh finding myself and not and and start being more outgoing was a thing for me because i'm i'm not the type to just talk to anybody unless i feel like okay this needs to be done you know that right. and um being able to perform in front of people is another thing like i used to be shy on that where um i would perform but i wouldn't put on a show you know what I'm saying? And so now yeah. when I did uh, the show with, uh, when I opened up for Lil Flip out there in Houston, that was the one that brought me all the way out as far as putting on a show. And I had the whole crowd singing one of my songs by the end of the song. Like they was uh, ad-libbing the chorus for me. And, and that just turned me into a whole different artist because I, <laughs> I, I'm not even from Texas one. And so when I can go, to somewhere like Houston and the crowd is singing my song and they not even here for me. They here for Lil Flip. It right. just, it, it turned me up, bro. I was like, okay, so this is how I should have been performing a long time ago. You know, this is how I should have been putting it on. But it took for me to go through some things like, you know, you know, I, uh, I ran into some trouble a week before that show and, and ended up, you know, doing a, doing a day in, in, in jail behind some, some stuff that I, you know, I should have stayed away from. And, and it wasn't even my, it was my fault, but it wasn't my fault. I think God was just trying to teach me a lesson. He was trying to sit me down and, um, and, and and bring to my eyes what I was doing and how I was doing it. And it wasn't for me. And so after that, I turned up, bro. Like I ain't had a show where if I don't get off the stage sweating, then I ain't do my job. You know what I'm saying? That's a good parameter. Uh, I, I like that. And I'm hearing like your transition from uh, uh, maybe it was just like a little inhibited to like really being able to put on that show. And this is something I'm going to talk about when I write a book on side hustles uh, for, for the audience. 
I've said I'm gonna do it, but I'm not putting the date out there yet. So don't don't get on my ass about it, please don't. It's gonna come out though. But like you know, I I call it the three C's: like uh, constitution, confidence, charisma, and uh, each one is a stepping stone. So when you first start doing something, props for it, trying to do it, and uh, you know you got to build a constitution to where like you're up there, and you might not be the most confident. You might actually be kind of boring, but at least you're up there. You know what you're doing. And once you mm-hmm. build the constitution, the next is confidence. And you do this stuff enough, eventually you're going to start feeling yourself, getting more confident about it, you know, start exerting yourself. And um, the next part of that is charisma. Once you have fully got the confidence, eventually you'll start to get the flow with it and get the energy, start projecting and starting to be able to make people smile and enjoy mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, they have the expectation that they put on themselves of immediately going to that charisma. And that's just not realistic. You got to go through the first two. Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, yeah, that's basically what happened to me. Like, it went from my very first show was the talent show at high school. And I was like, I'm talking about as, as nervous as I could be because, one, when I got in there and we did rehearsal, when they heard my, I already knew they was going to hate on me because I'm doing rap. You know, we are the most hated genre. Like, people just don't like rap because of, what these guys nowadays are making it out of. And so when I um when I got up there and I was like, I'm rapping, they wanted to hear what I had first. So I rapped it and I had a, a couple words in there with the way that I talked, they sound like cuss words, but they wasn't. So she was like, okay, that sound too close to a cuss word. So we need you to rewrite and, and, and make it to where it's not, uh, it's not like that. And so I had to get off stage rewrite the whole verse and and rehearse it right there within them five minutes and memorize it and memorize mm-hmm. it down to what i just rewrote and then get back up there and uh and record it they uh recorded the performances to play them on the school tvs at the end of the day and so um yeah i ended up I, yeah i ended up doing that um did I, I think I kind of, no, yeah, no, nah, I didn't mess up, but it was just awkward to me because I had to do all that. And so I was nervous about messing up the whole show. And um, after that show, I went on to doing like little mini, little bars, you know, open mics. And mm-hmm. I got tired of doing open mics because dudes come in there, it's only supposed to be two, three songs and they doing 30 songs. I don't perform till two in the morning. By that time, I'm tired. I'm just like, man, then, and that's where like the charisma come in at because after so long, you be like, man, shh. especially with the music I be hearing because I'm not, you know, I'm not arrogant or nothing, but I know I'm better than a lot of cats that be at the shows and mm-hmm. I know I'm going to put on a better show than them. And so when you drain all my energy out, now I got to somehow pull this uh, energy from somewhere that you didn't drain out of me from listening to your 30 songs that you and your homeboys, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that him and his homeboys been did. And uh, yeah, man, I just, I done done so many shows to the point, like I said, it took for something like what happened before the Lil Flip show to really bring out of me what uh, what I what I do now at the show. It's like, I ain't going to. I, I like I said, if I ain't sweating, I ain't doing my job, man. Like, and that's my whole thing. Now I got to get up there and project. I like uh, when I do my songs for the ladies. If it's a lot of ladies in the building, I know it's gonna be a lot of ladies there. When I do my songs for the ladies, I make sure I call them out. I'm, I tell them I'm not doing this song until y'all make some noise. I need y'all to get loud in here. And if they don't make no noise, I don't. I don't continue. I'd be like, nope. I ain't doing nothing until y'all make some noise in here. And then they'd be like, woo, you know, they make their little noise. And I'd be like, all right, that's what I'm talking about. And we call that crowd control. You know, you got to know how to, you got to know how to control the crowd because if not, they just going to be up there looking at you like, who is this guy? You know, they want somebody who's going to talk to them and who's going to get them involved. And so I try to keep the crowd involved at all times, you know, and, yeah, man, it's been a good learning experience these last couple of years of performing. I love it, though, man. I love it. <laughs> I can hear it in your voice. There's a lot of passion there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's it's because man, it's been a long time coming, bro. Like 
before I started doing shows, like I said, I was in high school, my first show. And even mm -hmm. after that, I didn't do like constant shows like I've been doing lately. Or, And I never thought that uh, I'd meet Lil Flip and chop it up with him. And I never thought I mean, I'd, I'd be well, talking about it. Lil Flip was the king of the South. Man, man, who you telling, bro? I, to me, he's legendary. So when they told me you opening up for him, I was like, what? Look, flip, boy, I said, oh, I'm finna show out. I said, I'm finna show out. This might be my chance, and I don't know it. You know, I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen after this. But you know what? I went out there, boy, I, like, I, that was the first show I did where I was sweating when I got off the stage. And like I said, they were singing my song. At that time, I was still passing out CDs. And mm -hmm. out there, I guess everybody had a CD player because <laughs> they was calling from, they was calling from VIP to ask me, I don't get no CD. And I was like, bro, I didn't even know you was over. I didn't even know you wanted one, huh? I just started passing them out to everybody, bro. It was not, I'm telling you, bro. I, Houston loved me, bro. Every time I go back, if I go back and do a show tomorrow and I'm on the car with some people, they going to come out there and they're going to be like, teasy, teasy. And I love it. I love every last one of them because – I know that they really support me, bro. They they watching me and they right. waiting on me to do something and vice versa. You know, I check them out every time I get a chance. And man, it, it Houston is just the place for music. Well, Texas, period. I'm gonna say that. But I feel like more goes on in Houston than Dallas because I've never <laughs> ran into a show in Dallas where I could open up for somebody legendary. So yeah, man. And then the promoter I know in Houston, he cool people. Like I ain't I ain't got no complaints about him. I could call him right now and ask him what he doing. And he going to tell me, like, he got something coming up in June. Uh, I think it's the 24th or something, but I haven't hit him up about it. I'm trying to see who he bringing out famous because he always, always bring out somebody. I could have opened up for Paul Wall. Uh, hmm. I think that was December, just past December. But I was like, I'm going to lay back for a while because – I want to get I want to get back into doing like my own beats and all that. I was just right. tired of using them songs that I can't use because somebody then took my beats on YouTube. So, I'm um, yeah, I'm slowly but surely getting back into the whole feel of it. And, and now that I got my own beats like United Masters, they let you put your songs on like movies and Netflix and ESPN and 2K. But in order for you to do that, you got to have the exclusive rights to all your music. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, that's a, that's quite inspiring to hear, man. Um, we actually, you know, you kind of touched on this in the beginning, but are there any studio hacks that are good to know for like uh, beginners? You mean like uh, uh, ones that they, that they can use for their own self? Uh, just in general, so like you know, someone's got the talent. They start rapping. You know, they got the lyrics down, and they need to go to the studio to you know make this happen. Are there like any uh, any uh, well, maybe studio hacks is the wrong word, but is there some stuff that they should know about the experience? that's good to know ahead of time. Now you uh, you did you did touch on this heavily earlier, so like that might have been like already. Uh, you know. Yeah, uh, I know. Uh... Before I got my own setup, if I was going to a professional studio, it's this app called Band Lab that allows you to record on your phone. So all you need is headphones, like your phone headphones, and you can record on there, or you can get that. Um, it's like a camera plug in that you can put in your phone, and it got the camera port on there, and you can plug an actual mic into that, a USB mic. And you could record like a snowball. You could put, plug a snowball mic in there and record your songs there. And they allow you to mix your own songs on there and everything. And it don't it don't cost nothing to go on YouTube and look up how to mix on there. And so that's another thing that you know you could do, or just like I said, just come prepared to that studio session because that's that's your money, especially if you if you one of them cats that you know you work in a regular nine to five and you don't have the resources like that. So you got to go to a professional studio, just mm -hmm. go prepared, like never go in there. I already had the beat sent to his email or on the, on the USB where he can find them easily. Um, make sure that um, you not letting the engineer waste your time also, because they mm -hmm. use different little tactics to waste your time. Also like, 
trying to uh adjust the mic for you and uh Man. yeah they do little stuff bro i just sit around they let you hear they beats that they made and you know if you're not there for that then don't let them distract you because that's wasting your time and you know you paying for this time so make sure if you are listening to the beats they made they already mixed your song how you want it mixed um you already got as many of the songs as you want to get done and you're not you know you're not still having to do stuff in the studio just you know come prepare and make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do it and, and like i said watch them because i i had to learn that on my own like mm-hmm. me and my brother going to the studio and we'll talk about it afterwards about how like uh the engineer was you know uh he kept talking to us throughout the throughout the session because the song was so good but we still in the middle of recording it and you know he want to keep chopping it up about it which is cool i don't mind chopping it up but we can do that after you know, I get everything done and I'm outside of the studio or right. they want to, you know, they want to kick back and take a smoke break with us. And we still got like 30 minutes or an hour left on our time. And we just like, okay, cool. But in the end, when we started realizing what was going on, we was like, oh, okay. I see what he was doing. Yeah. I was he like, I see what game. he was doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So in the long run, what he was doing was wasting our time. So we'll have to come back to the studio and record some more or get it all the way mixed and mastered. It. And some of these cats, they charge three, 400 just to master your songs. And it just don't make no sense to me when I can do all this at home. My thing is just do it at home. I that's it don't, you can go on Google and Google, um, microphone, uh, microphone. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, where it come with multiple things, microphone bundles, and you know it'll pull up the microphone, the the interface you need, the headphones, the uh, the, the soundproof um, panels you need to sound. Yeah, proof. yeah, the pop filters and all that, and it'll give you all that in one package to where you can start your own studio at home for two hundred dollars, bro. It do not cost that much. I promise you, two hundred dollars at the and, and that's that's gonna get you a nice mic uh the interface is gonna be good for what you're trying to do and the only other thing you would need is acoustic phone for your for your walls and to get your sound the way you want it to sound like Mm -hmm. this this album i ain't i dropped it in my room bro and i'm telling you it don't it don't give off that kind of sound bro so that was made in your room yeah that song that you that i just put out i made that in my room and in the middle of the room Oh, that speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> Damn a studio hack. Just make your own. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. All you need, bro, is, is all the stuff I just said, bro. That's all you need because at the end of the day, they going they gonna find ways to waste your time in that professional studio. And then if you already know how you want your music to sound, nine times out of ten, they not gonna understand how you trying to get it to sound. And so that's another reason why I stopped going because I don't care about like reverbs and echoes on my voice. Mm-hmm. I just want it clear enough for the person to hear the message I'm trying to send. You know, I don't care about it. Uh, you know, I say a word and then it echo for five minutes after. I don't care about that. I want you to hear me like Nipsey Hussle. I, mm-hmm. I, I like his, the way he mixes his because it's just his voice. He not putting no, no extra reverb on there like that. To mm-hmm. where it sound like a, it's not necessarily sounding like a robot, but it just sound like it's two voices on there. You know, mm-hmm. it's just it sounds strictly like him. And I know they have a lot of different equipment from us, from us people who are uh, just starting our own studio. So when you don't have the equipment they have, you have to figure out how to soundproof your room and or whatever room you're recording in to sound almost similar to this it's not gonna sound just like theirs because like i said you don't have exact the exact equipment that they have but you can get it to your liking to whatever you want your music to sound like and that's why i said i this whole album and i sat at the house man and i just i i took time out and just did it on my own just to see what i could come up with and i put that song out and i've been getting some positive feedback on it that got me like I should have been doing it on my own from the jump because I only I 
know what I want my music to sound like. You know, can't nobody else tell me that. You know, the studio thing, I will say this. I'm not knocking anyone who decides to just give that off to a professional. By all means, do it if you yeah, feel yeah, like not at all. But um, I will say this. And when I recorded my audio book for the Anatomy of Financial Success, I was going to do the studio thing, but uh, the pandemic hit. So a studio thing wasn't an option. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't about to wait till like, there's question marks on when that stuff was going in. So I wasn't just going to wait two years to drop the audio book i bought some courses online figuring out how to soundproof a room and what mics right. i needed and all that stuff and i got all that and i record the audio book myself and you know to get it to uh, amazon standards and all the other um standards set by these platforms and it worked out good and i, I wouldn't yeah. have thought i was capable of that and so i sat down and i had to do it and that's what i'm saying like you see we get so handicapped with with the professional well people who are supposed to be professional but i i don't i I don't know man like i just (laughs) i feel like i shouldn't have to tell you what i want it to sound like if you are a professional engineer but see a lot of the people that we go to to record they not only engineers they make beats and they rap too and you know what they gonna do they not going to make your song sound how good they song sound. They just not going to do that. That's every or every person that I went to, if they do music and they let me hear one of their songs, I'd be like, so you you uh, you uh mix this? And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, I did this myself. And I'm just listening to it like, bro, but my, my song don't sound nothing like this. And I just dropped it at the same studio and you the one who mixed it, but it do not sound like yo mix. Yo mix sound gooder than mine's. Like it's just it's so much clearer than mine's. And I'm just like, okay, I see what's going on. I'm gonna just do it at the house, man. Do it at the house, wow. man. <laughs> wow. Do it at the house. I'm telling you, that's the best thing. Do it at home, and you all and you will respect yourself more at the end because you like, man, I could have been doing this. It is not hard once you get into it. It's not hard. Because all you got to do is learn your voice and learn exactly what you're looking for for your voice. And you can save the presets. You ain't even got to keep doing it all. You can save the presets, put it on the next song. If it's too high, you can turn the little things down. But you can save those presets on uh, on BandLab. So that's what I do. I record it on Adobe Audition raw. I don't put nothing on it or nothing. I send them. Uh, I save the track. And I take the uh, the vocals and put it on BandLab and piece it all together. And I put my own little mix on there. I got a preset there strictly for my voice. And um, I get on there and I uh, I just, whatever, like I said, if it's too loud, I turn this down, turn that down. I don't put no reverb on it or nothing. I'm, I Sometimes I might, depending on how I'm feeling. But for the most part, I, I don't use reverb because I feel like it take away from the message. Got you, got you. A lot of uh, a lot of good game in this podcast. I will say that. Uh, regardless, if you want to be a rapper now, like a lot audience, you getting a lot of studio game too. Oh, for so, sure, for sure. So um, I will say this uh, since we're um, wrapping down. Uh, I always ask my guests, do they have a question that they want to hit me with? Well, it, it doesn't have to be about the topic. It'd be about like anything, my brand or what I got going on. But my audience has banned the question of why did you start this podcast? Because they heard that answer too many times. So they don't yeah, want to hear right. that anymore. So <laughs> like, um, you got any so, question? Uh, you got a question you want to hit me with? So uh, see, it's not necessarily how you why did you start it, but how do you juggle the, the different things that you do? You know, like you got the uh the the vegan one, the vegan podcast, you got this podcast. You got the book. Like, how did you juggle all that at one time? Uh, I would say it's a balance between what's passive and what's active, right? So, like, something like this, it's uh, going to be pretty much active. It's going to be for active income versus uh, something like the book. This is more so for passive income because I wrote this. It's already mm-hmm. making money in the background. Same for the audio book. Same for the uh, YouTube channels. Now, now that YouTube channels, that's a special case because it's because of the way I had it set up. Like how you set your music up, it has a very evergreen, passive component to it because people are going to be listening to it. it, it it's, it's evergreen. People are always going to want to listen to that 
no matter how old it gets because it's timeless. The mm -hmm. same applies to my YouTube videos. So it's not like making videos on how a cat can jump over this table or some some stuff like that. <laughs> now, it's always about financial management, money, or apps that's going to be around for quite some time. So that money just stays steady because without me having to do anything because people are still looking for that type of information. So the way I keep everything balanced is by keeping that spectrum balanced. You got active income. Yeah, there we go. You got active income. You got passive income. And if I'm going to get imbalanced, I'll get imbalanced on the passive side. Maybe I'm working too much on passive income. That's cool. But don't ever get too much into the active side because then you mm -hmm. run the risk of getting into a quagmire. And uh, the last time I was in the quagmire, that was when I was at a nine to five. Now I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that, boy. Them nine to fives, boy, they just be, they be mine. They be mind wrecking, bro. I'm trying to tell you, man. <laughs> man they, and then it's like they don't. You know, they don't care about your side hustles or what you got going on. So that's another reason why when I was at Amazon, I never really promoted that I do music unless somebody asked me about it or somebody like I went into deep conversation with somebody about music. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm more like when I'm in the when I'm in that type of environment, I don't try to promote it because, you know, I've, I know people who got fired for trying to do music they go and they look at your youtube videos and they be like oh he was doing this this and that in the video we don't want him here you know so i i just i yeah i, I try not to promote at work like that unless somebody asks me or i know this person does music also i promote to them but even now now i kind of i kind of stepped outside of that box and i just be like i don't care no more because y'all just a stepping stone for me anyway and so right, I, right. lately I, I I will do it, but not too, too much to where like the whole warehouse is like, hey, you know, he rap, right? Or, you know, this, this <laughs> and that, you know, I kind of hate when people do that because if I wanted them to know, I would have told them, you know, obviously I know this person <laughs> don't listen to rap, so I'm not going to tell them I do music, I rap, because then they're going to be looking at me like with the, perce with the perception that, oh, he's a thug or he's mm -hmm. this and he's that and i might not want you to see me like that you know uh, even if i am that way which i'm not i'm you know just a regular guy trying to do what i got to do to feed my family you know i'm not uh i'm not no gangster no killer i'm not you know that's not what i portray to be i'm just a regular degular person that know how to you know paint pictures with words that's it man and so yeah i i, I don't know work just people at work is just so they messy. That's what I'm gonna say. They messy. Uh, I think that sums it up right there. They messy. Yeah. <laughs> they might not have the tact required. They kind of read between lines, like, oh, you know what? I see what he's doing, but um, maybe not. I'm not gonna blurt it out everywhere because, like, where we're at, like, it's not very tactful. That could bite him in the butt. I ain't got nothing against them. So, yeah, I'm gonna check him off. I'm gonna check him out. Check his YouTube channel out. But I ain't gonna go telling the whole workplace like hey you know yeah like, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah if i want to ramble about them i'll ramble to like you know my sister or my friends or something outside of work right I, I, get at people, work. I get people all the time and i i, I show them my, my page and send them to my videos on youtube they come back the next day while I'm randomly talking to somebody and they be like, Hey man, you know, he rap, right. And I just be like, man, come on. <laughs> I'm like, we ain't even talking about that right now. They'd be like, really? And then I'd be like, yeah, man, I do. I do a little something, man. I ain't, you know, I'm all right, man. I, I'd be so humble about it. I'd be like, I'm all right, man. I ain't, you know, I ain't no Kendrick Lamar or nothing, but I, I do all right, man. And then they go listen to me and they'd be like, man, you said you was all right, man. You dope, this, this, and that. And I'd be like, all right, I appreciate it. <laughs> I that's just, that's I just another one of the, it. I'm starting to wonder if you read that book, The 48 Laws of Power, because that's another one of them. Like, downplay no, I, your success. And it has I the effect know. of being humble <laughs> and gets people more <laughs> interested in what you got going on. So, no, I haven't, I haven't read it, but uh, every time I've tried to find that book, Either it was it wasn't there, or it's just like uh, at the time I just didn't uh, I didn't have things set up right to get to, to get to it. And mm -hmm. um, the book I did, the book I read was um, "How to Win Friends and Influence People." By yeah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. I, I read that one, and I read um, "Contagious." 
Uh, the first one I had in my library, but I, it's in one of my uh, Airbnb units available for guests to read. So I, I was going to pull it out, but um, it's not available to. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, that's, and then that's how it was for me with the 48 laws of power. It's like, <laughs> we have it, but it's not here. I'm like, man, come on, man. Y'all don't have it then. Like, that's all you have to tell me, man. I, you just wasted my time, man. And so, yeah, man, I, I, I want to read that book, though, because I just I get this knowledge from bro. I watch so many different rappers interviews and CEOs interviews and I, I try to be more informational about what I do because like I said, if you don't, you end up getting played, man. And that's why I be mad at people who take these 360 deals and then they be mad about how much money they missed out on, but you didn't do your research. That's why you was you was money hungry. Uh, Meek Mill, he another one that, you know, he going through it with Rick Ross right now because of money issues. And, you know, we talked about Lil Wayne going to court, uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, man, it's just so many different artists. And I, I just now Lil Wayne, I, I get him an exception, which I really don't because you should have left when everybody else left. Right. But I give you an exception because Google and all that wasn't as big as it is now. Like you can right. just Google everything and they tell you about it back in them days. So he get a he get a pass semi. But mm -hmm. as far as like your the new people that's coming out now, that's too much information no, about how this stuff works. Ain't no excuse, bro. It's no and excuse. You literally bro. I forgot how many people, how many copies of straight out of Compton sold, but it sold a whole bunch. So the average person's probably seen it. If anything, they know how about that contract stuff that Ice Cube went through and Easy E went through and like well, even, even, even his situation was different, but he still got played. But yeah, even Tupac, Tupac man, he ain't make he ain't make nearly as much money as he was supposed to make, bro. Chug wasn't he wasn't giving him the money he was supposed to be getting like that, man. He he was selling all them all them albums, platinum and all that, and he man he wasn't getting that money like that because they wasn't as informed as we are now so if you getting played out of millions of dollars right now it's your fault it's nobody else's fault it's your fault because you didn't do your research or you didn't have somebody read this contract you was or the person you did have read it was just like you and was money hungry they just knew you was gonna give them a cut and so they was like man i take it if i was you you know that's the favorite line of somebody who want to reap the benefits. If I was you, I would I would do this and I would do that. Nah, but you ain't me though. So we're gonna leave it at that, man. Right? I'm gonna have somebody else look at this. <laughs> right, nicely put, nicely put. So I, I guess that'd be a good place to end off on. But uh, before we end off, like, uh, where can people find you, Kendrick? Like, yo, know, drop the uh -oh. social medias. I'm on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is official TZ Tankster. Tankster spelled T A N C S T A. Um, Facebook is TZ Kendrick LeVar Tankster. You know, Tankster spelled the same way T A N C S T A. Uh, my Twitter is TZ Tankster 60. Same thing, T A N C S T A. Um, I be on Snapchat, but not really. It's TZ Tankster on there too, but I'm not a. I'm not a Snapchat person. I don't want you to really. Who is on? Who is a Snapchat person anymore? Well, you know they DJ Khaled is. He he like getting oh, on camera cool. and saying, yeah, he like getting on there and saying another one. You know, I I don't see. I don't really get on there that much though. But, but it's it, TZ Tanks on there too. They rejected Facebook buying them. Then they literally just had put all their stuff on Instagram and copied it. I kind of forgot Snapchat existed. That's all. Yeah, that's I mean, unfortunate, that's unfortunate. Look, I forget all the time too. What my my thing is is I don't really. It's not. It's I don't like that you can't post statuses on there. Like you got to put the words on the picture, and then it's it only lasts for a day. It's just like putting it on your Facebook story, basically. With yeah, Snapchat. pretty much. So okay. yeah, man, them, them all the social medias I'm on though: Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And the ones you can talk to me on the most will be Instagram and Facebook. I ba I barely even get on my Twitter because Twitter's wide open now. I be I be seeing a little too much on Twitter now, and I be like, I didn't even know Twitter was doing all this. It's, it's a little reckless on there. And you know, when you be at work trying to go on social media, can't have all that crazy stuff popping up on you <laughs> on your phone, man. People walking. It's got very political 
over the past two yeah. years. Nah, nah, it's it's not where it's supposed to be at. Yeah, I, I guess we'll see what Elon does about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, nothing, nothing, except for slash the workforce apparently. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> with that being said, um, appreciate you coming on the podcast, Kendrick. Uh, and, for sure, um, man. And for anyone that's uh, listening on, uh, yeah, on the uh, well, actually, anyone that's listening, if you could leave a review on that platform on uh, what you thought about the podcast, what you think about the Side Hustler Society, it's very much appreciated. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you can give this video a thumbs up if you found value in it. Greatly appreciate it. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe. And um, su- subscribe to Kendrick, too. We're going to leave all his social media in the uh, show notes and in the pinned comment. Yeah, but, my, uh, uh, my, my YouTube is the same as my Instagram, official TZ Tankster. Yeah. Cool, cool. But, all right, everyone, with that being said, I'm going to say be safe, be profitable, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next episode. For sure. This episode may be over, but your hustling journey has just started. Visit the SideHustleSociety.com to access all links and resources mentioned in the show that will help you on your hustler's journey.